Hello, Mioni here and welcome to another news video for Final Fantasy XIV. This time we're looking at a recent interview that Dengeki magazine had and posted online via DengekiOnline.com where they interviewed Naoki Yoshida, the producer and director for Final Fantasy XIV, about the upcoming 5.2 patch launching Tuesday the 18th of February. This article is in Japanese, so I've translated this and I'll pick out the important bits. Firstly, 5.2 will be focused around the idea of the echoes of a fallen star, relating to how you see it depending on where you are and what timeline. So in the ASEAN storyline we saw last time about the destruction and calamity that caused Amarok to fall but forged their future, but at the same time we as a player see Dalamud as a reflection of what we think about when we see the echoes of a fallen star and what that would mean. The balance between the warrior of light and dark seems to be mediated in the middle by Elidibus, but this is said to shift towards 5.3. We'll also see a lot of storyline from Elidibus' standpoint and reveal a whole new side of a story never seen before, so I expect many more twists. This is further illustrated in Amnesis Anida, the new dungeon in 5.2. Yoshida warns in this paragraph that if you choose on launch day to do the MSQ, it will take the entire day to complete, so it's pretty long. He says the cutscenes themselves aren't terribly long on their own, but they have included quite a bit of extra content of play as well, so presumably more play from the perspective of another character, which will no doubt be rather cool. In regards to the ruby weapon fight, it is explained that this is a new weapon series. The new 8 player series will be all weapons. So my previous video theory about the emerald weapon, ruby, etc. seems actually fairly accurate. Yoshida mentions here that in the interview how this isn't a collaboration with Final Fantasy 7 and that it would put too much pressure on their game. However, he does mention that if they did do a collaboration with Seven, it would be much, much bigger. So pretty much hype for that statement. Ruby Weapon is said to have two phases, and apparently, unless this translation is completely wrong, if you wipe on phase two, you actually start from that second part when you resurrect. Presumably, this is quite a long fight then. The reward then is confirmed to be weapons, but obviously there's no item level details given at this time. The Relic Weapon series with the Bosjar Citadel carries on as we know from the Ivalis series as a direct completion requirement and is said to contain a solo instance for the first weapon's reward. This will be available in 5.25. You will upgrade the weapon throughout a 0.5 series, so 5.35, 5.45 and so on. They plan to add a Baldessian Arsenal style instance to this, but it will apparently be an extreme mode only difficulty fight. Apparently past the first weapon stage there will be a Eureka style instance with an independent leveling system similar but not directly the elemental leveling system from Eureka. Yoshida says that they have learnt from the frustration of players from Eureka that they had to go into the Eureka instance exclusively. So whilst there will be new instances to upgrade this weapon in, you will also have other ways outside of it to upgrade as well that he doesn't want to talk about. It's said that Yoshida wants to make as much of the weapon progress doable solo as possible, as last time they focused heavily on party play. It was asked if the Allegan Empire will be talked about in the storyline with Bosjar Citadel, and Yoshida won't say anything more for now. He mentions how they want to deal with the Galian Empire on two fronts, both the Relic Weapon with Bosjar Citadel and the Ruby and other weapon series of Trial Fights, which is a pretty cool way of approaching it. In regards to Eden, Yoshi P talks about how Reen and Gaia are at a similar age, had similar lives but there is a significant difference, and wants people to speculate further what happens when they come together. So that's all the hype for next Tuesday. It's asked if the 13 world or shard will be visited in this storyline. Yoshida simply replies by saying not this time, because if you pack too much you won't be able to dig deeper. Interesting, that's a really interesting way of replying. This time around in Eden we'll be covering two elements at the same time in terms of Garuda and Ifrit and Ramu for Thunder. They are still tweaking at the time of this interview which was back in January the 24th apparently and only released recently, but they say that this will be much harder than the previous tier due to last time there being new job action and brand new jobs to the game. 
Okay, so next up, it's talked about if a deep dungeon will be put into this expansion. Yoshida says that he is very sorry, but due to the budget going elsewhere into further content, there will be no deep dungeon in this expansion. Although in 5.3, they do plan to put something in for leveling in its place. So probably not a deep dungeon, something else, maybe some quests or something, who knows. It's also confirmed next there will be no ultimate in 5.3. They will implement one much later in a later patch without saying actual numbers here. And he says directly, I think it will be probably implemented later in 5.x. I think it will be more enjoyable. And that's all we've got. So no ultimate for the time being. A question about the new beast tribe is asked and Yoshida explained who the Katari are and their habitats and the Raktika Great Wood storyline that they fill out. They made it slightly longer this time around in terms of storyline and have branching paths that change the look of the camp that you find the Katari in depending on what you choose as a player. The story, however, and the rewards will not ultimately change based on that choice and appears to be purely aesthetic. Mentioning finally on this topic that the new Serpent of Ronka Mount being a very big highlighted reward. Next, we talk about ocean fishing briefly. They plan to increase the number of routes in future patches. However, in this patch coming on Tuesday, two routes exist, the Costa del Sol route and Lowland Dravania in Ishgard. There are three fishing spots on each of these routes as the boat moves between them for you to fish at, either solo or with your friends. You'll be able to freely walk around this boat, fish off the side, buy bait from the vendor on board and repair, and your fishing will be tallied up with a score at the end, which will result in experience for low levels and white and yellow gathering scripts for level 80s. There will be events where you will proc big bounties for everyone on board, and in the future they plan to add more unique events like this happen, such as an example here, catching a fish with all the players on a boat fishing at the same time. You can leave at any time, they say, with no penalty, but you cannot change jobs on the boat from Fisher without exiting first. It's then lastly talked about what kind of year does Yoshida want for Final Fantasy XIV. Yoshi says that he feels like the busiest person in his own life this year. We are working on the preparations, he says, of fan festivals and expansion packages, and the scale of Final Fantasy XIV is growing extraordinarily. The development is proceeding smoothly, but the content of Final Fantasy XIV is so large that it's a bit tough, he laughs. The scale of operations is expanded, and the number of opportunities to fly around the world has increased, and there are many projects that I still cannot talk about. So is, I'll do my best not to die, a good aspiration, he laughs finally. So there we go, stressful times at Square Enix, especially for Yoshi P with this year, and lots of preparations for future content. No ultimate in this or the next patch, and no deep dungeon in this expansion at all. So what do you think ultimately? Let me know below, and uh, a link to this Dengeki online article in Japanese will be in the description. I'm looking forward to your replies, and I'll see you all next time.